Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, part five of the $1,500 computer build video series. This is Windows Performance Review. I am going to be running three different web browsers today, running videos, running multitasking, pulling up different pages to show you how well this computer works as a day-to-day -day Windows desktop computer. Now, if you are new to this video series, check out the links in the video description below. Parts one through four will be down there, as well as a full playlist, including upcoming videos. Part one is the parts overview. Part two is the why vlog, the detailed behind the scenes thinking process behind why I chose these parts, alternative parts you might choose, and what benefits each one provides. Part three is the build video, the actual construction of the machine itself, detailed step-by-step -step look. Part four is Windows setup and system setup, uh, basic overclocking, BIOS updates, driver installation, etc. And that brings us to part five, which is Windows performance review. Now coming up after this will be VR mark and 3D mark, mark tests, storage tests, game performance videos, and more. So moving on, let's take a look at our web browser performance. I'm going to be opening three different web browsers and showing you multitasking when looking at a lot of different tabs while playing videos. This is the same test I've done on many computers in the past. And here we are to my YouTube channel. We are going to click on videos and we are going to open multiple videos to show you the overall performance when playing multiple high definition videos. So for now, I've opened six videos. Now, you, of course, are probably not going to watch six videos at one time. But the purpose for this is to simply show you how well the machine multitasks and handles a load. It's designed to show, because you're going to be doing different things on your machine. You may have multiple programs installed. You may have three or, three, three or four things open. That's hard to simulate on every single computer I test. So by opening six different videos, it puts a basically a load on the system designed to show you multitasking performance. And these videos do all play at the same time. It doesn't pause them. Now there's add, there we go. Oh, that's a good one right there. The uh, does CPU generation matter? Yes and no, but we won't talk about that for now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put all these in theater mode. And the reason is it will force them into HD resolution. Take a look at that, 720p at 60 frames per second. Move that, we're gonna move all these. Oh, there is the build video to this actual exact computer right there. And again, we're at 720p, not 60 frames a second because my overhead camera doesn't do that. There we go, oh, system setup, the one right before this and we'll make that full screen, and we'll make that full screen. So these are now all running in high def. So we have six HD videos running at the, well, there's an ad, at the same time. And that one's at 60 frames per second. There you go. The next thing we want to do is right click on our taskbar and choose Task Manager. And I'm going to open up the Performance tab. And the reason is I want to show you that the CPU is basically doing nothing or hardly anything. We're not even using one core. You can see that we're running at five gigahertz. I do have this overclocked as I showed you in the Windows setup video. System memory, we're not using that much of it, 23%. True, if you had only eight gigabytes of RAM, it would run just fine right now, but who's gonna build a $1,500 computer and only put eight gigs of RAM? I hope none of you. If you do, well, then with all respect, you did it wrong. Now, there's no disk activity to speak of. There's our solid state drive. The drives aren't being used. Now, we are using a moderate amount of bandwidth. We are using maybe 20 megabits per second to transfer this. Some of that is internet connection based. Now, I'm fortunate to be blessed with a really good internet connection, so we're not hobbled in any way by our internet speed, unless, of course, YouTube is overloaded, which it does get sometimes. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Google, and we're going to go to... Yahoo Sports. Now, I also do this on all of my videos. Why do I use Yahoo? Because it is a very demanding site with, frankly, a mess of a web page. This is an excellent representation of a website that was designed a long time ago and is very technically complex. All the elements you're looking, every one of these boxes, in fact, this box, this text, the link, these are all separate elements that were a separate request to Yahoo's website. Opening these six Yahoo tabs just generated several thousand internet requests. This is very CPU heavy. These are also dynamic pages, this ad here, this, all of the news, the updates, 
there's a video ad that just auto starts playing as soon as you put your mouse over it. This is all very, very intensive. So while we were not using a lot of CPU power to play six HD videos, we doubled our CPU usage opening these tabs. Now, the only reason this hasn't gone higher is because we have an i7 overclocked to five gigahertz, so it's able to keep up with it. If you've watched this on other videos that I've done, the CPU usage is often at 40 to 50% at this point. But many of those videos were on three to three and a half gigahertz CPUs with fewer cores or fewer threads, and that's part of where the difference is. With so much CPU power available, we actually aren't getting as much usage. That's very responsive, actually. I have to admit to being impressed. I didn't try this before running this. This is actually my first try. In fact, just for fun, let's open one, two, three, four, five, six. How about 12 Yahoo tabs? Will that bring the machine to a crawl? Wow. That is very, very, I am genuinely pleased with that. That is with 12 tabs open. Most of the machines that I try opening 12 tabs on are crushed. Try this at home. One of the benefits of running this type of test, you can open six HD videos. You can open 12 Yahoo tabs. Does your machine do this smoothly? Side note. The performance of this with and without an ad blocker will be dramatically different. If you have an ad blocker turn, turned on, turn it off just for the test. The reason being is these live ads and videos being shown dramatically slow down the web page. So if you have one on, just turn it off for the test because otherwise the results don't compare. How's our CPU usage? Nope, oh, we had a spike to 25, but it came back down. Not bad at all. Take a look at our main system RAM usage. Now, Google's Chrome is not known to be a memory miser. It sucks up memory like, well, like Google Chrome does. We are now using almost eight gigabytes of our system RAM. Let's come back to the videos. Yep, they're all playing. Hey, there's the installation of the CPU. There's my hands. And there's more setup video. Oh, that's almost finished. See, you can tell they're running because this video is almost finished. We're five minutes into this. And there's a motherboard review right there. I am going to be installing, by the way, the i5-7600K into that motherboard right there. And I'll be doing a build video of that soon enough. Why don't we do this? Just to make it more interesting, we're going to open this up, click videos. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. How... Oh my goodness, that looks terrible cold. Well, let's let the ads play. We'll come back over here. How are we doing on CPU usage and RAM usage? We now have 12 HD videos running. We now have, a, what, a whole 20% of our CPU usage? Big deal. This thing is a champ. All right, time for some more. No, we don't want to do that. Let's open up Firefox and go to Amazon.com. Hi, dress shop girl. She's back. She was gone for the holidays, but she's come back. If you've watched my previous Windows performance reviews, most of them have dress shop girl. If you're not signed into Amazon, this is what's going to show up. Although, as my wife lovingly pointed out, is she selling dresses or legs? Because there's an awful lot of leg there. But yeah, moving on from there, let's take a look at the CPU. And here we are at that, $350. Speaking of which, some people may ask the question, is it worth buying the 6700K when it's a few dollars less? At the moment, the 6700K here in the middle is about $12 less than the 7700K. No, not really. If you're going to spend 338 you can spend 350 Get the newer chip. It has a higher base clock speed. It overclocks a little bit better. If you're spending this kind of money, just go ahead and get the 7700. I would not buy the 6700 unless it was discounted more than this. And there's a close-up of the CPU. We're going to open up multiple tabs here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Oh my goodness, is it tax time already? Turbo tax. All right, traditional laptops. Look how smooth this is. That's smooth. That's such smooth scrolling. Fire tablets, colorful. Desktop computers, 
699 there's that uh, 1080p gaming machine i've covered many many times there's the 400 dollars acer spire t there are some great deals that i have reviewed there monitors lots and lots there's the 32 inch 1080p ips for 200 dollars. that is a killer deal it's a great monitor keyboards graphics cards hard drive look how smooth this is we're using two cores we've got 12 HD videos running. We have 12 Yahoo tabs open. We have 12 Amazon tabs open. And we're basically using two cores. That's incredible. We're using 25% of our CPU power. Now, it's worth noting that the reason we're using two cores, 50% usage is four cores. 100% usage is using the hyper-threading, the eight threads. So at 25% usage, you're at two cores. At 13% usage, you're at one core, and so on. Take a look at main system RAM. We are in fact using 64% or 10 gigabytes of our main system RAM. Many people have said, what about 32 gigs of RAM? Or maybe we've been splitting the difference and getting 24. I don't think it's necessary in 2017 to get more than 16 gigabytes of RAM for a general purpose desktop machine. 16 is enough. We have 36 web browser tabs open. I'm willing to bet most of you do not have 36 web browser tabs open on a regular basis. I don't have that, and I'm a heavy, heavy multitasker. The only time I really think you need to go beyond 16 gigs of RAM is content creation. Now, I'm not going to cover that in this video. I might do it in a future video, but I do have an i7 4790K, two generations before this, fourth gen. Um, well, I say two generations. I guess it's three, but they kind of skip the fifth generation. I did have to upgrade that to 32 gigs of RAM because running Adobe Premiere Pro editing 4K video with Adobe Photoshop open 16 gigabytes was not enough. And if you do something like Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro editing 4K video, yes, you should have 32 gigs of RAM. But if you're just web browsing and playing games, 16 is plenty. Let's come back over here to the videos. Take a look at that. They are all still running. In fact, we are, there we are four plus minutes into that. Grand Theft Auto is way too much fun. There is a video card video, another, oh, performance comparison. That's the CPU, just the CPU generation matter, matter in Battlefield 1. Uh, not really. Clock speed matters more than anything else. There is the Y vlog, the one hour, five minute, and 40 second video. And then we're back to that one. So we have 12 HD videos running. This is all still smooth. Nothing is swapping to the SSD. You just can't ask for any better. That's amazing. That is perfection. That is by far the best result that I've seen. It's right up there with the $4,000 Ultimate System build, the 6-thread 12-core i7 6800k machine uh, that I did that that's just perfect what else is there to say perfection so this concludes our windows performance review coming up next will be 3d mark and vr mark benchmarks storage benchmarks and game performance videos like this video if you like it share it with your friends if you love it remember to subscribe to my channel using the big huge red button directly below this video questions and comments in the comment section below and as always check out my video description below links to all of the parts used in this build as well as some alternative suggestions to both amazon and newegg will be down there links to my full playlist of videos on this computer will also be in the video description below so go check those out i would greatly appreciate it Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.